I have a challenge for those of you out there who believe that a god, any god, exists, which could potentially change my atheist mind on the subject. And given what you expect us to believe, I think you'll find that it's a fair and reasonable one. Think you're up to it? Then let's do this. Greetings fellow space travelers, Bionic Dance here, and as I said in the intro, I have a challenge for theists that, if met, could possibly change my mind on whether a god exists. Now I'm not saying that I want a god to exist, given how most of them are described, the idea is, well, repugnant, but as an objective and empirical thinker, I must bow to the facts if they point to a god's existence. So how does this challenge work? There are just three easy steps. Number one, show an event that you can prove actually happened. Number two, show that your God is responsible. And number three, show that this event could not have happened in any other way. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, this was just the Cliff's Notes version. It's actually a little more complicated. For example, let's look at step one. You can't just point to the Bible and say, see, it says it happened in here. You have to find something that scientists or archaeologists, or both, could agree happened. For example, the Moses Exodus story. There is absolutely no archaeological evidence whatsoever that Jews were ever enslaved in Egypt. How about the Noah's Ark flood story? There is no geological evidence to suggest that the earth was ever completely covered in water, never mind the fact that two of each animal isn't nearly enough of a diverse gene pool to perpetuate the species, and every subsequent generation would have to be the product of incest, which often leads to birth defects. And what about all the predators? What do they eat? Either they make whole species go extinct while they feed themselves, or they starve to death. How's that supposed to work? Or how about the existence of Jesus? At the Atheist Alliance of America convention I attended this weekend, there was a debate between Richard Carrier and Dwayne Morris as to whether or not there was a historical Jesus. So that one's still up in the air too. So if you're going to show that an event actually happened, you have to choose something that can be proved historically, geologically, archeologically. You might have to go looking outside the Bible. On to step number two. And this one is actually kind of negotiable, showing that your God is responsible. In step one, we asked you to prove that something did happen. Step two is showing how. Things happen a lot. Every day is made up entirely of things happening. So which of those things happened all on their own? And which of those is your God's responsibility? And how do you know? Suppose that you escaped from a car crash entirely unscathed. Why was that your God's doing? Why wasn't it that the car was well made, you were wearing your seatbelt, and the collapsing telephone pole hit the passenger side instead of yours? That particular sequence of circumstances could have happened entirely on its own. Yeah, you were really lucky, but nothing supernatural was required for that outcome. So what made you suspect that your God had anything to do with it? Which brings us to step three. Show that this event could happen in no other way. Let's face it, God is a magical being, supernatural. The only difference between a miracle and a wizard casting a magic spell is who's doing it. I know a lot of religious people who get grumpy when you make that comparison, and I know probably a bunch of D&D &D fanatics are right now telling me, no, 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 there's a difference between arcane magic, divine magic, and thaumaturgy. Get over it, guys. For our purposes, it's the same damn thing. The point is that if you're going to prove that a deity exists, you're going to have to show evidence that steps outside the mundane, physical, corporeal world. If the event you're trying to describe, the one you're trying to prove actually happened, could be accomplished by a vacuum cleaner, electrodes, or just some guy with a pulley and an inclined plane, it's not going to be convincing. You're going to have to be able to show that the event you've proved existed could only have come about through the supernatural. It's like the question of why God won't heal amputees. If a missing limb suddenly started to grow back without any obvious mechanical assistance, it's going to make an atheist like me start to question my unbelief. But if the event being described could have come about through entirely mundane means, then my question is, why was a God necessary? And why should we suppose one participated? So let's recap, shall we? 
you can get an atheist like me started down the road of suspecting a deity might exist if, number one, you can prove that an event happened, number two, you can show that your deity had a hand in its happening, and number three, that it could only have come about through magical means. Essentially, this challenge asks you to take faith out of the equation, or at least to start to, and replace it with evidence. It's not even the best evidence in the world. It's not definitive in any way. But at least it's better than the fairy stories you've given us so far. Are you up to this challenge? Are you even willing to attempt it? Or are you going, like so many before you, to take it as a personal insult rather than a genuine question? Because I assure you I'm being genuine, but if it sounds to you like you're being made fun of when someone's being sincere, that's probably not their fault. If your religion repeated back to you sounds ludicrous, perhaps you ought to have a deeper look into what it is you believe. Regardless, I look forward to your responses to this challenge. Perhaps one side or the other will win a new convert. Perhaps not. But either way, this is Bionic Dance saying don't run on automatic. Instead, please think.